Alright, this is Josh C1107 here, and uh, I just wanted to talk to you about database class. If you're like me, you get frustrated about hours upon hours upon hours of doing things like inserting commas, copying, pasting, insert statements because of a limited buffer size, and, and so forth. And so what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to find the best way to do this that requires the least amount of tedious work and uh, will kind of allow you to work smarter, not harder. And so what I've done was I've compiled a series of steps that will allow you to build a database in the least amount of time. If you do this right, I would say you could do a large project in six to eight hours. It's definitely possible. And the thing is, everything we're doing is not that hard. It's not incredibly difficult to get data from Excel spreadsheet into a database and run a few queries but when it's poorly formatted there are capitalization errors there are blank spots and all that kind of stuff what it does is it makes you spend hours upon hours looking at excel spreadsheets and copy pasting and just things that aren't related to database whatsoever and because of that you know i, I want to give you ways that will allow you to spend more time actually learning how to do database stuff rather than spending time doing tedious work so i'm going to start off i'm assuming that you've already had your logical design of your database done. That's completed. You're ready to begin formatting your data to insert it into the database. And so what we have here is just a sample from the Dream Home database and this is our Anison office. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to start formatting some of the data. And so I'm going to start with our staff table right here. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, in this staff table you see we've got first name, last name, position, sex, date of birth, salary. And what I've chosen to do in my staff table for my database is create a staff number, which would be a surrogate key and it would be a primary key for this table. Uh, obviously, first name and last name are things that can be shared by several different people. And so none of these fields really lend themselves to, to being a primary key just because of the fact all of them can be duplicated and trying to do something like creating a, a composite primary key based on maybe first name last name and something like date of birth would be difficult and I think it's kinda counterintuitive to a, to a logical database design so what I've chosen to do is build a surrogate key and I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to insert these right here we're gonna right click and insert a new column and we're gonna call this staff ID and we're gonna go ahead and format that the same and I'm gonna call start this with an S and then give it the ID number we're gonna start with S001 now obviously if you're working in multiple spreadsheets you're gonna to wanna to start the first one where the last one left off in the previous sheet since we're working on the first sheet we can just leave it like that and so I'm gonna click drag it all the way to the end and it's gonna go ahead and fill the series for me if for some reason it doesn't you can come down here in Excel options and uh, make sure it tells you tell it to fill the series and so now I've got my staff ID number and, and that's great I've got this table ready to go but since I'm using a surrogate key it's gonna create a little extra work for us in some other tables so I'm gonna come over here and show you an example from my staff in charge table now if we look at the top of this <clears throat> we see we have a property for rent and each property is assigned to a particular staff member now right now that staff member is identified using the first name last name and position now what I want to do in my database is so we don't have to include all this information I want to assign a certain staff ID number to a single property so what that's going to require me to do is me to look up each of these staff members and place their ID number here so I can have this formatted correctly to insert in my database now you can do this one of two ways you can do it the hard way and print out maybe your staff IDs and go through and look up one by one by hand and do it or we can allow Excel to do it for us and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna right here use Excel's VLOOKUP feature now VLOOKUP is a cool little function Excel's got and it stands for vertical lookup but it's not very flexible it wants the data it's looking for in our case we're gonna look up based on last name in the leftmost column of whatever table it's looking at so if we come back over here to staff we see the leftmost column is staff ID well we don't want staff ID we want to look up based on last name and so we're gonna to have to do something to uh, manipulate that now real quick 
I'm looking up based on last name just because there are no duplicate last names in my table. If you ever had a situation where there were duplicates in your last name table, you could do something like combine first name and the last name, first name and last name into a single cell right here, and then I could come over and do the same thing and combine all my first names and last names into a single cell right here and look up based on that cell. But for right now, we don't have any duplicate last names, so we're okay, we're all set to look up on last name. And so that's what we're gonna do. Now, I need to start by creating a lookup table. Since VLOOKUP table wants this formatted a specific way, and I don't wanna change this particular sheet because it's how I want it for my database, I'm gonna need to create a new sheet. <clears throat> I'm just gonna call this sheet staff lookup. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to my staff table and I'm gonna grab the last name and staff ID columns. So I'm gonna copy those out of there and paste them right here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take last name, put it on that leftmost column, the way VLOOKUP wants it, and this lookup table is all set. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my staff in charge and I'm gonna add a new column right here and this is gonna be staff ID, which of course is the ID of the particular staff in charge. And so I'm going to give it this VLOOKUP function. It's already on mine right here. You can search for it or do whatever, but just find your VLOOKUP function. Click OK. Now once the lookup value, this is the value we're going to look up based on. So in our case, it's farmer, which is our last name. All right. And then it wants the table array. The table array is the table of values you want it to search for that particular value you gave it. And so we're going to give it the whole table. Now notice I gave it the whole table, not just this L name column, because I want to give it what it's searching for, yes, but I also want to give it this column, which is the value it's going to return. Okay. Now the value that it's going to return doesn't have to be immediately to the right of that column. It could be two or three over, which I think was the case in several of mine. But uh, you should go ahead and include it, because then I'm going to give it a column index number. Now what the column index number is, is uh, oh, excuse me. What this column index number is <clears throat> is no. Remember that I selected this whole table right here. Now my staff ID is the number one two column in that table I gave it right here. So I'm going to give it two as my column index number. Now say staff ID were in column D over here, I would give it one two three four as my column index number. So that's how you do that. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK and it's going to insert this function. Now one other thing we need to do uh, in this particular function is we need to add a comma and we're going to add one more field. Now you can overload this and you can say true or false. By default it's set to true. That is it will return an approximate match. Now most of the time we're going to be working with string data. And the thing about string data is if you have an address or two addresses like 1100 somewhere road apartment 2 and 1100 somewhere road apartment 3 it's going to count those at a, as approximate matches I don't know how Excel deems an approximate match especially when dealing with strings but those will apparently be close enough to be deemed an approximate match and, and I did run into situations like that in building my database so I'm going to come down here select false push tab and enter and what that did was it went ahead and put false in my formula now one last thing we've got to do um, before we move on and click and drag this guy, we want to make this referencing in our lookup table absolute referencing. All right, and so I'm going to put this dollar symbol before the two and before the 18, which was the row range for our lookup table. Now if I didn't do this and I clicked and I dragged this guy down, I would start seeing less and less found values and if it doesn't find the value in the lookup table it's going to give you an NA and all that means was it couldn't find the value in the lookup table and you're going to want to be aware of that because if you forget to add this absolute referencing um, it's going to cause some serious problems for you you're going to get missing values or incorrect values and things like that so I formatted that equation exactly like I want it I'm going to go ahead and click and drag and notice there it goes. It looked up all of our employees for us and went ahead and inserted the employee number or staff number. And so we take one and look at it. Edwin Tudor is found as staff 017. 
I'm going to come back here to my staff table, say staff 017 is in fact Edwin Tudor. So we see that using that method, Excel has gone ahead and filled in the surrogate key for us in the table we need. So that's a quick tutorial on VLOOKUP and formatting your data through Excel spreadsheets.